Today I'm here with Philip Cooper. He's the current president of the Lions Club of Whitford. He was the previous state director of ELDIV, which stands for? The Australian Lions Drug Awareness Foundation. You've also been on various boards and charities around the globe, including the United Nations. I have. So I was an Australian representative of the Lions in New York, as well as in Geneva, as well as other board and charitable roles. Thanks for joining me today, Philip. Oh, you're very welcome, mate, and it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Before we get into it, just tell us, who is Philip Cooper? I was born in Perth. Um, I'm 48 years of age. My wife Terry and I have been married for 28 years, and we've got three beautiful children. So Joshua is 19, Brooke is 17, and me is 9. Before we got started today, you shared some statistics with me that you've personally had to deal with over the last 12 months. Do you mind sharing those? No, look, so um, it's, it's actually quite distressing in these particular cases because I've had 644 cases that I've been personally involved in from the 1st of January. So the most important one was that we've had 37 suicide attempts with some resulting in death. Um, that's increasing day by day. We've had 62 mental health related cases, again increasing day by day. Uh, we've had 189 alcohol and drug related issues and the effects that's had on families. We've had 146 requests for information regarding cyber safety, 161 cases involving school, university and associated bullying and unfortunately this is another case that's increasing day by day. Um, we've had 49 requests regarding identity, sex, transgender and related issues as well. So all up so far is 644 cases since the 1st of January of this year that I have been personally involved in. On, on that note, you've been personally working with mental health related issues since 1983. Yeah, so... In 1983, I was actually the, uh, a youth worker with Save the Children Fund, and at the same time, I was involved with the Royal Australian Air Force Air Training Corps. It was in my youth where I saw four children uh, between the period of 1983 to 1986 commit suicide. Wow. Um, for those who don't know, p part of the reason I started the, the Beacon Project was because I had a friend that reached out to me I didn't pick up the signs and I, uh, he went home and he suicided. Unfortunately, you've got some personal, personal, a personal story to tell as well in your home. I do, and it's, it's not picking up those signs is probably the most distressing element because to my wife, Terry, and I, we had a situation in 2016 involving our daughter who at the time was 15 years and nine months who attempted to commit suicide. Thank God, and I thank God every day that Brooke was unsuccessful. However, what it showed us is that there was a number of things going on. The fact that my wife and I were totally unaware of the problems, it was kept in secret. Mm -hmm. And the issues that was happening on a day-by-day -day basis, whether it be cyberbullying, whether it be trolls on the internet, people getting caught in situations where they're on social media. Um, it was something that was unbeknown to us and it left our daughter in a position where she thought that was the only way out. What changes have you made in your household since you've, you've been, been made aware of the situation? You know what? I've been asked that question many times. We have a very good household, we have a very good communication, but what it showed us that we were lacking in different areas. So our communication has greatly improved. Mm -hmm. The communication, whereas, you know, sit down, take the time to understand what's happening in the kids' lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always say to the kids when they go out in the morning to learn something, I always ask them about their day. Mm -hmm. We were doing that, but probably not to the extent that we needed to, to understand the issues the kids were facing. So, and including listening non-judgmentally? Very much so, because the kids need to understand if they've got an issue, and it's not just in our own family since un the unfortunate circumstances with Brooke. We've also seen at her same school other instances where children have attempted suicide, and it's, it's a case of being open, being honest, to be... To be give them the freedom to be able to come and talk to you because only when you go and ask for some advice is usually the first step to being able to find a solution. So not only have you had personal experience of child bullying, yes, you also have special specialised in family law, helping people with family law crises and, and including child support. Very much. Um, veteran affairs 
and people that are experiencing financial difficulties or in a financial crisis and it could be something to do with their banking or, or insolvency? So my corporate experience, I'm involved in the turnaround insolvency reconstruction sector. So my role is to come in and manage businesses in distress. Not only are we looking at companies, we're also looking at the directors. We're looking at directors' families and mental health, mental health related issues are increasing day by day across every industry, every sector, um, across the community in general. It's a situation that myself, my wife, the organisations we're involved in, particularly with Lions and even our local Lions Club, we've been involved in many. We've got issues right now with, um, with Department of Communities across WA and we're involved in a number of issues and initiative with them. Yeah. So yes, we've had a lot of experience in that area. People need to understand it's if you are feeling, if you are feeling in a way that you're unwell, it is okay not to be okay. That's one of the biggest things that we do discuss when we talk to people. It's recognising how you're feeling and the steps you're taking to be able to deal with that and also get the support that you need. So is that a reason why you're standing for, for public office because of all this crisis and you want to make a difference in the community? I think it's extremely important that we're Australian. We look after one another. It's mental health, mental health related issues, mental health awareness, it's now starting to become, a, it's becoming more widely recognised. Mm. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do within the community. We've got a lot of work to do to support one another. So yes, that is a very, very important reason why I've decided to put my hand up and stand for public office because at the end of the day, we are one community and we've got to look after one another. So Philip, how can someone reach out and get in touch with you that may be dealing with family crises or you know, child support, veteran affairs, yep. um, financial um, difficulties, child bullying? How, yep. could they, how could they reach out and get hold of you? So my details will be at the end of this video. Um, I'm available, my office can be contacted. There is a number of things that we can put in place with the support that you need. Mm. I also had the opportunity of attending the Invictus Games where the military and our veterans are concerned last week and to see the adversity that our sick and our wounded veterans have overcome was significant and again it's an area particularly with family law and child support related issues we're seeing more and more suicides and deaths occurring on a weekly on a monthly basis so please acknowledge ask for support ask for assistance and just help. But it most, in, most important, it's when someone puts their hand up and asks for some support and assistance that you understand what is going on and you help them. We're a community and we look after one another. I'd like to say thank you to Philip be, be, for becoming an ambassador for the, the Beacon Project. I appreciate it. And it's, thank you for the work you've been doing for the Australian community. It's my pleasure. I'm grateful to be given the opportunity to assist and there's a lot of work that we need to do to move forward. I've been involved in this industry as we've gone back as far as mental health, mental health related awareness since 1983 and there is a lot of work for us yet to do. As a community, it's important we need to look after one another and we will move forward and it's my, it's my pleasure to be here and to help you. Thank you. So if, like Philip, you'd like to reach out to and get in touch with me, you can get hold of me at the Beacon, Beacon Project Suicide Prevention page or where you're watching this now. The Beacon Project has been designed to reconnect Australians in, the, in their community, to show them that people care and are willing to listen to them in their time of need. Because I think communication is the key to reducing the significant amount of people that take their own life daily in Australia. Suicide is the leading cause of death for all men 15 to 44 in Australia. Seven people every hour in Australia attempt suicide. That's over 65,000 people in your community that are attempting to take their own life on a daily basis. Again, if you'd like to get in touch with me or be part of the Beacon Project movement, you can get me at the Beacon Project Suicide Prevention page or wherever you're looking at this now. Thank you. Thank you.